Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Vince DePasquale. I'm the director of a program called The Starting Point over in South Jersey. And I'm going to share some things with you today based around spirituality and recovery. One of the things I believe in very deeply is that the core root of our whole entire recovery program is spirituality. But I want to start by kind of telling you a story. Back in 1977, I dropped a lady off for treatment at a rehab in Northeast Philly called Riverside House. After I dropped her off, the staff asked me to stay and give the lecture at one o'clock. I was still a priest at the time. And I said that, yeah, okay. And what do you want me to talk about? They said, talk about spirituality. So I talked for about 30, 35, 40 minutes. When I finished, the director came up to me and he said, why don't you come back once a month and give the same talk? I said, I'd love to. I have no idea what I said. So he said he taped it on the way home. I listened to my own talk and got a lot out of it. <laughs> so today what I want to do basically is kind of share with you the fundamentals of what I shared way back in 1977. And one of the things I've learned about spirituality and the core of it is the actual definition of the word. The word actually has nothing to do with religion at all. The word spirituality comes from Latin and Greek. The word is spiritus actualis, which means an actualization or an awakening to our personal spirit. In our 12 steps, they talk about a spiritual awakening. It means coming to an, a concept of who you are as a person, waking up to the real you on the inside. So what I want to do today is something real simple. I'm going to give you what I call the four spiritual questions and the five spiritual principles. Now, if you get what I'm saying to you today, it's really simple, it's really basic, and it does work. If you're going to live by these principles and by these questions, then basically you'll see how the recovery program does work. So the four questions. Number one, do you love yourself? Do you have any idea who you are? The most important part about life is learning how to love yourself before you can love somebody else. The second question is, do you like yourself? My name is Vince DePasquale. I happen to be the best Vince DePasquale there is on the face of the earth. Nobody else believes that, they're missing something really special. I gotta be comfortable being me. The third question is, do I respect and do I honor myself as a person? Now, I normally joke a lot when I am around people in recovery. I always say, you have to excuse me, I have to curse now. Hope you don't mind me cursing. You know, I could run four letter words past you all day long. I was a prison chaplain for nine years. I used to run halfway houses for us convicts and for alcoholics. And I think I can teach you all the words. But there are two words that addicts and people really can't stand. I just can't stand these two words, so please excuse me for cursing. The words are reality and responsibility. <laughs> you have to face reality and take responsibility for your own life. In short, you gotta grow up, what can I tell you? So basically and fundamentally, you gotta come down to the reality of yourself. The last question is, do I care about myself? Now years ago, I used to hang out in Philadelphia at an AA clubhouse called the 4021 Club. And we had a group of old timers there. I used to call them the crusty old men. Great bunch of guys. But they taught me something called simplicity. And they would play with me when I was a priest. They would say, Father, what are spiritual things? I used to say spirituality is making your bed in the morning. It's your bed. You slept in it, so you make it. Spirituality is buying a bar of soap and using it. It's called personal hygiene. Spirituality is eating healthy food, getting proper exercise, getting good sleep, nurturing and taking care of your body because your body is something sacred and it's something beautiful. In my active addiction, I clocked in at over 300 pounds. My life was chaotic, it was insane, it was out of control. I look at life today, I'm in my 70s, I'm probably in better shape today than I was in when I was 40. I'm doing things I never did before. My life is great and it's wonderful because I've learned something. Your body is sacred and it's beautiful. And spiritually, I have to honor this body every day and care for it every day. And if I do that, it will honor me. So the four questions are fundamental and they're basic. And they teach us the value of life. Now the five principles. Let me start with the first one. The first principle has three letters to it. D, D, T. Don't do your drug of choice today. Now, I wish I could take this principle 
and actually drill it into somebody's head. It's so simple, it's unbelievable. Everything in life is only for one day. Recovery is only for one day. We have to learn something. We have to learn how to live one day at a time. Forget yesterday, take care of today. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody, okay? It's a big one. Yesterday is over and is done. Whatever you did, you did. Whatever happened, happened. Whatever happened was supposed to happen. The secret of life is, am I able to face it, process it, then it becomes my teacher for today. So my favorite spiritual word, kind of have to share this one with you, is the word fertilizer. I love the word fertilizer. Now think about it for a minute. Where does fertilizer come from? It comes from manure, right? You take good old fashioned crap, you process it, and it becomes fertilizer and life for plants to grow. Now I'll tell you a story. When I was a kid, I grew up in a wonderful city called Camden, New Jersey. And again, way back then, my father was an immigrant that came from Italy. He came to this country in 1920. He had my mother's name tagged on him. Their marriage was prearranged. And so literally, my father met my mother, married her, and 18 years after they were married, I was born. I'm the only child, by the way. I have no idea what they did for the first 18 years. The joke in our Italian family is my father got drunk and went in the wrong room one night, and here I am. What can I tell you? I don't know. Probably my first connection to alcoholism way back then. But the concept is, is basic. My father was a farmer, so my father gave me a job. Had to go around the streets of Camden with a bucket and a shovel. We had horses pulling stuff back then in the 40s. My job was to scoop the manure up when the horses made a deposit, bring a bucket of horse manure home, for every bucket of horse manure I brought home, my father gave me a nickel. Now, a nickel back then got you a triple feature at the movies. Milk was two cents a quart. We actually bought our house in Camden for $2,900. I can probably buy two houses now in Camden for $2,900. <laughs> Always joking, so I buy two crack houses. It'd be fantastic. But the concept is, I literally, my father would process it, and we have beautiful, beautiful plants. My father told me a story. My father was in the First World War in the Italian cavalry. If you saw the movie War Horse, my father rode one of those suckers in the First World War. When his regiment ran out of food, they would eat soil to stay alive, the farmers. I learned something from my dad. If I have the strength and the guts to face all the things that happen, my crap as I call it in my life, then it becomes my fertilizer for life today. If I can look at everything positively. The second spiritual principle, three letters. We do three, three letters. P, P, T. Persons, places, and things. Now, I gotta share this with you. I've been going around to rehabs for a long period of time, and I have a search going on. For the past 30 some years, I've been trying to find a dumb addict. A really, really, really dumb one. I haven't found one yet, what can I tell you? I wish I could. You know why I want to find a dumb addict? Because they'll get it. They'll get it. You know why? Because they'll understand simplicity. I've learned something in this program. Hang around winners. Hang around positive people. But I'm going to tell you a secret about positive people. They're boring. They're actually boring. You know why? because they have this thing called serenity, inner peace, tranquility. They enjoy life. Life is simple. There's no drama. See, addicts and even codependents, we're used to craziness, insanity, drama. If we don't have any, we create some. What the hell? What are you going to do? It's all part of it. It's all part of our process we go through. We're used to craziness, chaos. And we have to learn how to be around people that are simple, plain, and down to earth. That's called recovery. It's simple. There's a good friend of mine in South Philadelphia, and I love the guy, his name is Billy, and Billy is mentally challenged. He's probably lucky that he's mentally challenged. I put him in treatment in 1978. At treatment, they told Billy, get a sponsor, call your sponsor every day. Billy has 27 sponsors, calls everyone every day. 
If you met Billy at a meeting, guess what? Billy would probably ask you to be a sponsor. And if you said yes, you get a phone call every day till 10 years after you're dead. Not a problem at all. It's totally amazing. See, I, I love Billy. See the simplicity? He doesn't go around crazy or nuts. He just keeps it simple and does what he has to do every day. And I really believe that's how you should live life, in a very simple, basic way. The third spiritual principle, two letters. H P, higher power. Now, when people first come into recovery, they usually tell them, go find your higher power. My philosophy is a little bit different. I tell people, stop looking, because the higher power will find you. See, when you get out of the way and stop trying to control everything, then the higher power will find you. So spiritually, I've learned something in life. You gotta go with the flow and know that God speaks to us through every situation we experience in the course of our journey in life. And that's one of the things I truly believe in today. And I would truly believe if you're able to open your mind and open your heart and just listen, then the spirit will come in and teach you what you have to do for the course of the day. The more you try to control it, the more you try to organize it, guess what? It doesn't work because then you're playing God. And so we have to learn to stop playing God, and just simply go with the flow of life and be open to it. Now, the old timers taught me something a long time ago. And to me, this is what I call the philosophy of life. It's so simple, it's unbelievable. They used to say, recovery begins on your knees. Recovery begins on your knees. I have learned this in my own journey in my own life. Every morning when I get up, if I happen to wake up, which is wonderful every, every, every day, I always say, thank you, God, for the gift of today. I go downstairs, kneel in front of my sofa. I say my morning prayers, my third step prayer, my seventh step prayer, my 11 step prayer. Then I sit on the sofa and read my meditation books for the day. After I do my meditation, then I turn the TV on. I have 40 episodes of Archie Bunker, George Jefferson, Urkel, and Happy Days taped. I watch one every morning. I've learned a great spiritual journey. Start your day with prayer, meditation, and laughter. When I go home at night, I say goodnight to my wife. I kiss her goodnight. I go to her bureau. She has 12 angels on her bureau. My wife's in the angels. I'm Italian. I got to kiss them all goodnight. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom. I say goodnight to every angel. Go to my bureau. I got the Blessed Mother and St. Anthony. I give them both a hug, give them a kiss, say goodnight to them. My wife said it's the only girlfriend I'm allowed to have. It's fantastic. So then basically I get on my knees, say my night prayers. And before I go to bed, I always say, good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. Now, I don't know if any of you know Mrs. Calabash or not, but she, Mrs. Calabash was the favorite one of Jimmy Durante a long time ago. And they asked Jimmy, who's Mrs. Calabash? He said she represents every human being on the face of the earth. So when I go to bed, I say good night to all the people that have touched me and I have touched over the course of my journey in my life, either before or after. They're all part of my journey. And I will never forget anybody and stay connected to one another. It's part of our recovery process. And so the old timers made a lot of sense. They used to say, get on your knees and ask for help, and then you will get it. It's that simple. See, I've learned something. I quit the debating society a long time ago. Whatever keeps you straight, whatever helps you on your journey every day, that's the higher power for today. You know, I'll tell you a couple of funny stories. I was giving a talk one time, and I still when I was a priest over at Charter Fairmont Hospital in Philadelphia, the rehab. And while I was giving the talk, this Jewish guy, Bernie, used to drive me nuts. He really drove me nuts. He would come up to me and he'd say after my talk, Father, Tell me who the higher power is. After a while, I got tired of listening to him, so I grabbed him by the back of the neck. See, back in the 80s, we could do that. We could grab him by the back of the neck. We did what we, we called direct therapy back then. <laughs> I took him outside. There was a tree outside. I said, Bernie, I want you to come out here every morning and hug the tree. At nighttime, come out here and thank the tree for keeping you straight. I came back a week later. I said, Bernie, did you talk to the tree? He said, yeah. Are you still straight? Yeah. Treat your higher power, leave me alone, don't bother me anymore. You got your higher power now. See how simple it is? 
And I've been around for a long time. I heard a lot of stories. And I know now that whatever works, I don't debate anymore. You gotta be able to laugh a little bit and look at life a little bit. And one of the things I always love talking about is some of the crazy things that we did in the past. See, the higher power comes to visit us in funny ways. And that's the secret to this program. I'll show you, I'll tell you a funny South Philly story. You know much about South Philly, you know back in the 80s, in the 70s, South Philly was about 98% Italian, okay? And the Italians are weird, what can I tell you? See, we have this thing. We're not real creative on names. We usually call the girls, you know, either Mary, Maria, Carmela, Teresa. The guys get all the same things, Vinny, you know, Tony, Anthony, all these crazy names. And because we're not very creative, we give everybody a nickname. So we had this guy who snuck into South Philly, he was an Irishman. How they got there, I have no idea. But he came across the border. But anyway, we finally got a hold of him, we gave him a nickname. We called him Chuggalug. You know why we call him Chuggalug, don't you? He drank a little bit too much. Every time he got drunk and he got high, he'd go into a bar at 23rd and Moore in the Point Breeze section of South Philly. He would go into the bar, and the bar was an all-black bar. He would go in there and utter some very interesting names. The owner of the bar was named Porgy. Porgy clocked in at about 270. Porgy would literally pick Chuggalug up, throw him over his shoulder, take him to our treatment center down the street, knock on the door and say, Father, either you take him or we're going to kill him. So we took him. He actually repeated the same thing three times before he finally got straight. When he finally got sober, guess what he said? His higher power was Porgy. He should be dead today. And many people I've met on the course of my journey should be dead today, but they're not dead. You know why? Because God has something in store for them. We never know how it's going to work. That's why they go back to that first principle of just taking everything one day at a time and keeping it simple and keeping it basic. I've learned something in this program. You've got to laugh a little bit. You've got to cry a little bit. You have to be able to do what you have to do. But recovery works in so many different ways, and I really believe that God works in such beautiful ways. Think about it for a minute. Think about the founders of AA, Bill W. and Dr. Bob. And think about the early people that put together this whole entire beautiful program, the program of the 12 steps, the 12 traditions, and basically the big book. You gotta think about it for a minute. All that beautiful wisdom was put together by a bunch of recovering drunks. Isn't that fantastic? It's unbelievable because I really believe it was divinely inspired. I really believe God spoke through them, and God speaks through us, and God keeps trying to get us to begin to hear this message. And it's the message, the spiritual message of life, to get in touch with your personal spirit. It's a secret to everything in life. So whatever works, I don't debate. If the Bible works, use it. You know, if the Torah works, whatever. Because I really believe the 12 steps fundamentally come from all the great writings of the world, the great principles of the world. They're all the great principles of life. They're all connected together. And I really believe that things were pulled together. And the 12 steps have actually become what I call the greatest spiritual program on the face of the earth. Looking at somebody who studied theology, who went, because has a lot of wonderful degrees after my name. They look pretty on my wall, by the way. And they're all in Latin, too. I don't even know what they say. But the bottom line is simply this. And I learned nothing about life, nothing about spirit or spirituality until I really got connected to the 12 steps. I truly believe they're a gift from God. I truly believe that they're the 12 beautiful, simple principles that will teach you self-love, self-awareness, self-discovery. They're foundations for that spiritual awakening. Now the fourth spiritual principle, three letters, G-O-D, God. Word's been around for a while, what can I tell you? We have a simple definition of it in our program. The definition is G-O-D, good, orderly, direction. In short, shut up and listen. Gabish, see how simple it is? We learn something in this program. We all need structure, order, and direction. Because left to do it our own way, it doesn't work. I've seen so many times people try to be their own doctor. And guess what? 
they usually end up getting sicker. The real reality of life is we got to learn to listen, to follow direction. You know, one of the old timers in the program used to do this. I, I got a kick out of him. Here's a guy that probably had, I don't know, 400 years sobriety. I don't know. Who knows? Nobody ever knows because they didn't believe in that. They just said one day. So he would do something in meetings. He would sit there and never talk, never shared, never did anything. Just sit there. And every time they asked him, they said, they used to say to him, you want to share? He said, he, here's what he would do. Take his hand and he would go. So they translated for him. He used to say, get on your knees, ask for help, and listen. He called it the formula for recovery. Get on your knees, ask for help, and listen. I'll never forget that as long as I live. The simple, beautiful things of life. And that's really how it works. We've got to learn to follow direction. Let me tell you a story. Years ago when I was connected with a rehab over in Northeast Philadelphia, the name of the rehab was called Riverside House, and the director of the rehab was a guy named Joe P. And Joe was one of my great spiritual teachers. I love Joe. God rest his soul. I'm, I'm sure his spirit is here with me today. Beautiful part about this process and how it works. But Joe used to run a rehab. We had, we had a nickname for the rehab. We called it Recovery Boot Camp. And the reason why we called it that, because Joe had a simple concept. When you came into the rehab for 28 straight days, you had no more contact with the outside world. No TV, no radio, nothing. You know, today they probably take away your e-pods, iPods, whatever kind of pods you have. Probably do all that stuff today. But the concept is, everything in the program, 24 hours a day, was recovery, 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 recovery. They literally brainwash you into recovery. I used to love watching Joe. After breakfast every morning, he would arrive. He'd come carrying a placard about this big. It was the schedule for the day. He would walk into the cafeteria carrying it, and he would climb up on top of the table in front of the cafeteria, standing right on top of the table, hold it up, and here's his exact words, I'll never forget them as long as I live. He would say, I had a meeting with God last night. God told me to bring you this schedule. And God told me to tell you, follow it. And God also said, if you're dying, come in and die following the schedule. But God also told me to tell you, if you don't feel like following the schedule, God told me to come and visit you. He don't want Joe to come and visit you. See, Joe would help you pack your suitcase, take you to his famous front porch. He had a rocking chair on the front porch. He would sit you in a chair, put the suitcase next to you, and he'd say, you have a choice. Either come back in, follow the schedule, or take off. He goes, strike one. If he came back in, no questions. Then a second time, back to the porch, strike two. Then the third time, Joe would take you to the porch, but you would not make the rocking chair. He would take his foot and stick it someplace where the sun doesn't shine and tell you, go die. You're tired, when you're ready, come back. Go back out on the street, do your thing, and when you're ready, come back and follow the schedule. He used to say, they'll never forget this, he used to say, see this rehab? This is a sacred place. It's a place of recovery. It's not a place where we play games. If you truly want it, then you come in this door and you do it. If you don't want it, that's okay. You gotta do what you gotta do until you want it. And I love that concept, the way he dealt with life. There was no nonsense, no craziness, no bull. Everything was simple. It was basic. You were there for a purpose. And I'm going to tell you, we need structure, order, and direction in our life. Not just as addicts either. We need it in every aspect of our life. It's really important. We need a sense of where we're going and be able to open to the process. Now, the last spiritual principle, number five. Now, it's a simple little word. You probably heard it in religion quite a few times. The word is S-I-N, sin. Now, the, the letters don't mean anything, but the word does. See, I really believe this very deeply. There's only one sin you can actually commit. The rest don't count, okay? And that's simply to give up on yourself. Never give up. Keep coming back. We have no guarantees in this program. All we know is that for today, do the best you possibly can do. And this is how life is in general. 
I really believe that every day of your life you do the best you possibly can do, and nobody ever does it perfectly. If you ever find anybody who does this stuff perfectly, please do me a favor, call me. I'm gonna be their manager and take them on tour. They're probably a robot. But even in reality, there's no such thing as perfection. Even in the big book of AA, they say this all the time, progress, not perfection. And this goes to every basic aspect of life, because they really believe very deeply that the 12 steps are principles for life for every human being on the face of this earth, for every human being on the face of this earth. And that's why we have to learn the importance of taking everything a day at a time, not to give up, do the best we possibly can. But you're going to have bad days, you're going to have good days. Some days you don't know what you're having, but that's okay too. Because you know, really in reality, you're going to find out sometimes that it just isn't working. And maybe if you wake up tomorrow, it'll work. What can I tell you? I don't know. Nobody knows. All I know is to keep it simple and work in the aspect of today. Let me share one more story with you. The story I promised I would share actually to the day I die. It's a story that happened to me when I was stationed as a priest in Atlantic City, New Jersey. While I was there, I met a gentleman there named Elijah Smith. Now, we had a nickname for him. We called him Smitty for short. Smitty was one of these guys who tried to stay, stay straight. Three months in, four months out. Two months in, five months out. Six months in, two months out. Boom, back and forth, back and forth. Five rehabs, back and forth and back and forth. He would come to meetings and beg and beg and beg and try to be straight. We found Smitty after 10 years of battling this disease. We found him dead in his apartment. I conducted his funeral. A few of us got together, we chipped in and bought a tombstone at the Atlantic City Cemetery. It says, Smitty's sober today. If you come to our treatment center in Westmont, New Jersey, there is actually a plaque up on the wall as you walk in the door. Our building is dedicated to Smitty as the symbol of the recovering person. And the reason we dedicate it to him is because he gave it his best shot. That's all we asked of anybody. No one knows what the journey of life really is all about. We take it one day at a time, live it to the best of our ability. Come into our treatment center, we have a memorial wall, and the lecture hall, we got another memorial wall. Around the hallways, you'll see plaques. All these things are dedicated to people who have come through our doors at one time or another. They're all part of our family. They're all connected together. And we never forget any of them. And that's why I always do a little prayer service every morning when I go in, never to forget anybody, because one day my name will be on one of those plaques. And that's okay too. Because literally, that's the journey of life and really what it's all about. And every one of them who have gone before us, went before us to teach us about today. And that's why I truly believe, I truly believe that there is no such thing as a failure. Everything's just a journey. Do the best we possibly can do one day at a time. So spirituality to me is something really, really, really simple. Spirituality is loving yourself. And by the way, that's a full-time job. Liking yourself, respecting who you are as a person, caring for yourself. Because I've learned if I don't do those four things for me, I have nothing to give to anybody else. Stay away from your drug of choice for one day. It's all just one day, no more than that. It's a simple, simple concept. Do the best you can do just for one day. And if you live by that one day, it's what it's really all about. Hang around good, healthy people. Stay away from negative persons, places, and things. Know where people are on your journey and know when to do, when not to do. Take care of yourself. Get honest, the higher power. I always define the higher power in a very simple way. Get honest, get humble, have a sense of humor, and don't forget to heal and make peace. The four H's, the four higher powers, I call them. I always put that on the second step. I have to come to believe. I have the power to become honest, become humble. I have the power to have a sense of humor, to laugh at myself every day, because we are funny, what can I tell you? And finally, I have the power to heal and make peace with the past and my, I'll be restored to sanity. See how simple it is? And yet it's hard for us because we keep trying to do it our way. We have a saying in the program, ego, ease God out, 
Good orderly direction. Let God in. Follow direction. And finally, never give up. Keep coming back. Do the best you possibly can do. I truly believe that all of us, no matter who we are, are on a spiritual journey. It's probably the ultimate journey of life. And if we just open ourselves up and realize the beauty of that journey, we'll see how each and every one of us is one of God's creatures, one of God's creations. And we have inside of us that beautiful gift of love, peace, and serenity. And yet we are no different than anybody else. We have to go through hell to get to heaven. I've often said that people ask me, will I believe in heaven or hell? I say, well, we're down here already, but the struggles we got to go through are of concept of hell. Heaven is recovery. Heaven is growth. Heaven is sharing. Heaven is service. Simple things we do in the course of our journey in life. So hope this helps you understand spirituality just a little bit better. I try to keep it as simple as possible, and it does work. And so all I can tell you is do the best you can and realize how important each one of us are as human beings in this world. And celebrate yourself and enjoy who you are as a person. So thanks for being here. Hope that it helped, and if I can ever help, please feel free to get in touch. God bless.